everyone. I'm Jensine Bard, and welcome to Testimony, where truth is told, lives are changed, and hope is given. Revelation 12:11 tells us that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, a testimony of your story for His glory. So how does a crack addict become a CEO, inventor, and creator of arguably the most famous pillow in the world? A pillow that has become a platform for evangelism, philanthropy, hope, healing, filmmaking, and now in his soon-to-be-released memoir, What Are the Odds? From Crack Addict to CEO, best-selling author as well sharing the miracles of over 41 million pillows sold to date, 1,600 employees, and three drug dealers who refused to sell that, quote, last fix so that Mike would keep his word, become successful, get them off the streets, and that he did, and this just for starters. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome to testimony for part one of my two-part exclusive founder, and CEO of The Pillow that started it all, MyPillow.com, an honor, a joy, and good friend, please welcome Mike Lindell. Mike, welcome to Testimony. Oh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, it's an honor to have you here, sir, and now it's really Dr. Mike Lindell with a recent honorary <laughs> doctorate of business bestowed upon you by... Liberty University, I just have to say, you shared your testimony before 12,000 students, and before that, 50,000 millennials in prayer. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it was, uh, it's been amazing for a guy that couldn't talk to people and couldn't speak to them. Being able to be where God's put me now, it's been amazing. Well, before we get into all of that, I just have to say for our listeners that your pillows and sheets are fantastic, beautifully packaged, delivered, and tailored to meet individual needs as laid out in your enclosed brochure with scriptures included. Truly wonderful and comfortable. We thank you. So let's get right to it. First question. You come from a broken home. Your parents divorced when you were seven. You were painfully shy and never felt like you, quote, fit in. Tell us the rest of this story leading up to a dream you would have and the miracles that would follow. Mike Lindell, please tell us your story. Well, you know, you started it there. I was, uh, my parents divorced when I was seven years old and I was put into a new school and I either, either would show off, like jump out of a moving bus and go, hey, you guys watch this. And, and uh, or I wouldn't talk to people, especially people I didn't know. And this this kept with me for just until a few years ago. I was very, you know, you can't, and I look back now and it's because it's rejection. You can't get rejected if you don't talk to people. So this, these inner things I didn't know I had then. I'll give an example. I was at my five-year class reunion and I had worked at a drive-in movie and a, and a grocery store and I, I dropped out of college after the first quarter. Um, and at the five-year reunion, my class, all of them were finishing college. They had they had kept their same jobs, so they had moved up in their jobs. They had started families. Well, when I got to the reunion, I took over that reunion, and I told them about, you know, I, I went skydiving. I crashed my motorcycle, and then went skydiving. My parachute didn't open. It. True <laughs> stories, but it was just it just took everybody's attention. And I said, you know, I owe the mafia uh, $20,000 from football bets. They came to my door, and they were going to kill me. And But everybody was mesmerized. But that night I got home. And I'm laying in bed, and I'm and I'm I'm very sad. I had this sadness about me because deep down, I wanted what they had. And but for me to get some self worth to be able to talk, I was telling all these stories that were true, but they were just it wasn't you know it wasn't what uh, what I wanted deep down. Well, uh, in 1984, um, I ended up getting indu- introduced to cocaine, and that gave me a like a false courage, and it gave me I could talk to people then, and. So, I mean, I, I became a very functioning addict, but God did hand me a, um, a beautiful woman. I got married for 20 years, had four kids, and we were we were a very functioning family. Um, I was always an entrepreneur, and I ended up having a 
local bar for 13 years, which wasn't a great place for an addict. But <laughs> we were the we were the kind of so these I believe all childhood you know manifest into uh, addictions where you have trauma, um, you know, uh, fatherlessness, all these things that manifest into addiction. But I didn't know it then. So we, you know, we we continue. We function as a family, and we were a family where the neighbor the neighbors would. Uh, then their kids over there, we were like the hub of the neighborhood, the fun place to be. Um, but, the, you know, I look back now, I think of the things I did miss out with my kids, you know, throughout this addiction and uh, throughout with the cocaine years. But then in 2000, it switched to crack cocaine. And for me, uh, or for anybody, you know, every drug react different. It's a completely different drug than cocaine. And, uh, and... That takes people down a lot faster. They all take will take you down and have you know manifest into bad things happening. But it, it took me down very fast, and it was in a parallel track with. Uh, I did get the dream of my pillow, which I believe is right from God in 2004, and I got the dream of the name first. And I wrote my pillow at about two in the morning. Wrote it all over the house, my pillow, my pillow, and how the logo would be. I kind of wrote it everywhere, and and uh, my mind was just going crazy thinking about this pillow. My daughter, one of my daughters came upstairs and to get a glass of water at 2 in the morning. She says, what are you doing, Dad? She's like 12 years old. I said, I'm going to invent this pillow. It's going to change the world. I had this dream. It's going to be called my pillow. She grabbed her water. She looked at me. She goes, that's really random, Dad, and headed back <laughs> upstairs. <laughs> amen and amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to founder and CEO of MyPillow.com, Dr. Mike Lindell. Mike, the timeline and events of your story are just fascinating and also incredibly encouraging to anyone who has ever felt defeat in business, in life, in marriage, and family. And now, with all of your great success, which we are going to talk about more in depth in part two of our conversation, you have a desire to give back. What is the single most important ingredient you can share that is responsible for your success to date? Well, I think you got to go through the failures first. And so when I invented my pillow, um, the, when I invented it, I, it, I went through, I was turned down everywhere. And I was devastated. I couldn't have the box stores. Everybody turned me down. And, and then I had uh, betrayal. People tried to take my company, tried to copy the copying the product. I mean, just you name it, it happened besides my own adversity with the crack cocaine. And this went all the way through. I lost a 20 year marriage. Um, and these guys that were taking our company, we were making the packaging, our pillows in our living room and we lost, lost our house. We lost everything in it. And, and, and like you said, you had said before the, you know, the drug dealers actually did an intervention on me in 2008. I'd been up for 14 days and they, they didn't, uh, and I came out, I was downtown Minneapolis, so I came out, I go, what are you guys doing? They said, well, Mike's been up for 14 days, and we're going to cut him off, and they, and two of them left, and one of them went and stayed up with me, and then he finally fell asleep. I went down to the streets of Minneapolis, came back upstairs after I couldn't get crack at 2 in the morning, so I've been down there an hour, came back upstairs, he said, how'd that work out for you? He said, give me your phone, I'm going to take a picture of you, and he took that picture, and he goes, you're going to need that for your book. He says, you've been telling us for years that this my pillow thing is just a platform for God, and you're going to come back and help us all someday out of addiction and help us all. And, and that's been, you know, my platform is to help people. When, when I finally did quit a year later, when God set me free on January 16, 2009, I still, you know, that, um, the, the thing to help people was always, always there. But that, you know, that's where... For me, when I sold my first pillow, and when I did a booth and, and a, a pillow booth, and I put a table out in front of me where I could actually talk to people, then if I stepped out behind the booth, I couldn't talk to them. But the but the first show I did, I got a confidence. I think what God did there, I sold them the pillows. They came back the next day and they came up. They go, "This is the best product I've ever bought. It helped <laughs> me so much. It helped my neck. It helped this." But that made me feel good inside. It wasn't about the money. It made me feel. Gave me some self worth and. And it just, uh, I've always been a giver, and it's, for me, it's just to give back for where I once was, to be able to get that, the, you know, it's my story, what I was getting to. My story is my hope, and that's, that tell anybody, you can get, I, mine's such an extreme from being where I was to where I am now, but there's hope, that, you know, 
it just tells you that anything with God, all things are possible. Amen and amen. And that's what my husband and I, when we first met you at the NRB in Nashville and then later again in Anaheim, marveled at your incredible story, your passion, your love of Christ, and willingness to share boldly and unashamedly your story and your faith. We were riveted, Mike, and blessed all at the same time. But your life as a professing Christian was not always this way. And I'm talking to Christians right now. You made millions. You lost it all, and you would find yourself in a basement living with your sister and asking God why. Can you elaborate in our remaining moments and the miracles that would follow? Yeah, let me let me just, and I've got to quick accelerate that up. But you, everybody see me with my cross I always wear on TV. I wanted to be that person. I believed in God, but, I, you know, and, and I wanted to be that person. I always told people all my life, you know, I would talk to people after the bars closed or whatever, and I'd talk about, hey, I read the Bible in jail and stuff, and, and they would quit and find Jesus. I'm going, what did I say? I'm losing friends. Well, here in 2014, I was completely, we were within two days of going under at my pill, and I met this gal, and she had, a, she had a personal relationship with Jesus. And she goes, you don't have that, Mike. And I'm going, I'm getting all offended. I believe in God. Don't tell me what I do. And, mm-hmm. my, you know, and I got all offended. Well, then things started happening. From then on, we had a, you know, I prayed with her, and we, you know, we ended up. My pillow made this comeback in history, where, um, we, you know, where we're at today. You know, 45 million pillows later, and 1,600 employees. But I want to quick get up to this point. Miracles started happen through 14, or 15, 16, 17, where God put me in places where nobody could have ever been. I, w- I went to the National Prayer Breakfast and picked out of 12 people to pray with Ben Carson. I look at mathematical odds, the odds of something happening. If, it, if you can't figure it out, it had to be God. Well, this led all the way up to, um, to February 18, 2017. I went to this like a retreat thing called Operation Restored Warrior, and I went in there with hope that I would come out of there with what Kendra has, this personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I went in there, and Jesus showed up, and I did a full surrender, and that's when... I could finally, when I could go out and speak with no fear, like I did the 50,000 millennials at U.S. Bank Stadium, and and speak out for Jesus, and I wasn't speaking out about a pillow. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to internationally acclaimed businessman, speaker, philanthropist, and now author of his soon-to-be-released, What Are the Odds? From crack addict to CEO, Dr. Mike Lindell founder of MyPillow Inc. and the Lindell Foundation Recovery Network, providing hope and healing to those suffering from addictions of any kind. You can learn more about Mike Lindell's work, ministry, and mission by visiting michaeljlindell.com and mypillow.com and get his book, Get Help, and get a good night's sleep, too, with the pillow of your dreams and so much more. You will be blessed and refreshed that you did. Dr. Lindell, Mike, as we all know you, thank you for taking precious time to share just a little of your amazing story of overcoming to become all God intended. We look forward to hearing much, much more next week. God bless you. Thanks for having me. God bless. Testimony is a global broadcast made possible by the generous contributions of our valued partners at Jensen Bard Ministries and you, our listening audience. Together, we are reaching souls for Christ, one testimony at a time. If you would like information on how you can support this broadcast with your tax-deductible gift, please visit us at jensenbard.com. That's one word, J-E-N-S-I-N-E-B-A-R-D dot com. And join the conversation at our Facebook page, Testimony with Jensine Bard. Thank you for listening, and please join us again for Testimony. Testimony.